sound. Yeah, there should be. I don't know why you're not getting any. It's light enough for me. So if I'll just wait a second for Alpha. <laughs> Alpha's Alpha's on it. Okay. So they couldn't hear any of us? Okay. I mean uh, Right, we'll, we'll go back and we'll talk about what we're doing. Okay. <laughs> Rip our joke was 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 rude. But anyway, so we're gonna play new game. Um Everyone likes MGS1, I think, so we'll go with that. And we're going to play on very easy. No, we're just going to play your Phoenix stream. Um, yeah, right that's a, is time, that a time stab at me, right? Um, time starts... After the end um, of World War II, whatever. the Alpha world was split into two. Doesn't matter, because we track by RTA in this game. This marked or the beginning IGT of the era excuse called me. the Cold War. Right, so uh, as you can see, we have to listen to Snake's speech at the start of the game. Uh, he's just going to tell us it marked the beginning of the Cold War after World War II. Uh, so you'll notice Raichu selected European Extreme. Uh, <clears throat> European Extreme is the hardest typically offered for both MGS2 and 3. Uh, and it puts the game in a state where if you get seen by an enemy, you will be instantly gamed over. There will be no chance to escape. The second the alert comes through, uh, you will just get put to a, a failure state. Uh, as you can see, our health bar is practically non-existent. So... That's always fun. Yeah, these uh, we gotta goes. collect that backpack. Our yeah, backpack these European boring. guys. They don't yeah, need we help. need the backpack. Well, see, I'm not European, but I got the European version of the game being Australian, so <laughs> I'm just as extreme. We have free healthcare, we don't need lots of health. Um, oh, that was a terrible joke. That All was... right, so... <laughs> so we got our... Um, our... Uh, Backpack, like Eric Nelson said, we can't move without that backpack. Uh, if we try to go through this into this area, we'll just get pushed back and told, "Snake, you naughty bastard, go and get your backpack," or you won't get any tea when you come home. So we're avoiding these crocodiles. Um, there might be alligators and whatnot lying around, but this isn't Florida, even though it does look a little bit like Florida. Um, I mean, it is a swamp. Yeah, that's right, and it has alligators. Speaking of Florida. I will be running this game at AZDQ 2020, so make sure you check that out. Um, so this is the first area with an actual enemy, and I'm, I'm going to shoot my gun um, in line with the Marathon's team. So we're going to quickly line up. We're going to miss, because I'm bad. And we'll get him eventually. What I tried to do there, and I'll get a chance at redemption later on, is a quick headshot by... <laughs> aiming at a guard on a certain level so he kind of has to be on around the same level as snake uh, using first person and going on snakes like tippy toes which is really stupid we kind of just line up with his head and it makes headshots a lot easier and faster yeah they have to be on the same vertical plane as you but more often than not that's fine so, uh, the two strats you've currently seen Raichu do aside from the quick headshot is the bumper roll. This game has the worst hitboxes I have ever seen Coming when it comes to somebody rolling into an enemy. <laughs> um, this will be evident quite a bit where you can run through an enemy, do a front flip, and the power of Snake's Thunder Thighs will absolutely just obliterate them. Uh, and, and the Trank Roll. And Trank Rolling is pretty self-explanatory if you don't hit them in the head tranks will not one shot them uh, and will not put them to sleep instantly in any difficulty above very easy however if you are to knock an enemy down uh it will cause the tranquilizer to take effect and what we're seeing here is just movement pretty much your yeah. movement has to be perfect in here uh although as that guard that you roll through will see you and uh a game over or a continue uh like four minutes into the run never looks great it's pretty devastating believe, to be honest i believe raichu is going to be going attempting to go for the foxhound rank which means no kills no alerts no continues no saves nothing well, we actually i think you can have a couple of saves in casual play but we won't save yeah. saving is bad you got 25 um, but we're not going to use them 
It looks cool. Yeah. But I probably won't get Fox Hand. Like, I'm going to be perfectly honest, because Fox Hand is hard. <laughs> like, yeah, Fox, Fox Hand is hard. Like, speeder in this game with no kills is easy, right? Speeder in with no alerts? Well, that's easy enough, too. It's the continues. It's just because not getting seen is a nightmare, right? So. Well, exactly. Is bullet save bad, speed good. <laughs> what in its most basic form. So this is just exactly menuing. Um, I'm going. I'm clear. So snake has like, I think it's six cuts and two broken bones. We want to cure all the cuts first because our menus are set up to do so, and then the two broken bones. But the game automatically goes for the broken bone before the last cut, so we just quickly switch up to do the cut. Safety strats. I don't do safety strats. Ever. Uh, there really isn't safety strats for European <coughs> extreme anyway. The game is so tight on cycles and movement that going slower generally would be less safe. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, the safety strat for European extreme is do it casually, right? The speed earning it, you just kind of have to go for it, you know? Now, that's not to say there are some variant variations in some of the strats. Um, I was just drinking my coffee. Um, in the area after this one, there is a. There's two ways of doing it. One, you can roll onto a bridge, or you can choose not to. Choosing not to loses a second, but it's much safer. So I'll use that one. Um, because I just hate that bridge roll. It's so awkward. Uh, snakes rolling is a bit weird, um, as I've mentioned. So. Uh, there is every chance that instead of rolling on to the bridge, you'll just roll yourself off the cliff and into the same, like, canyon we got thrown into just a few minutes ago. In-game, it's been about a week, and as you can see, Snake has made a, um, a, uh, a fantastic miraculous. recovery. Yeah, miraculous <laughs> recovery after getting his ass handed to him by his surrogate mother, essentially. Uh, so, aside from the bullshit... Uh, what you saw there was Raichu cooking a grenade. Uh, on certain surfaces in this game, for whatever reason, holding a grenade and cooking it silences your footstep. And you'll see this a couple of times in the run. Uh, we used it to get behind that guard just before, and that's unfortunate. Uh, my movement was bad. And there's an example of how bad movement can ruin your whole life. My angle was far too uh, wide. And we'll just wait one second before we go here. And I was seen. It's as simple as that. So rip Fox Sound. It was nice to it was nice to know you. <laughs> but it's fine. Don't worry about it. The, like the L's first two rooms that we just got through, or we're about to finish the second one here, are probably the hardest on European Extreme. Um especially for being so early in the game. I mean they really kinda stack the difficulty against you right at the right at the first area and i know a lot of people who've tried to learn your ubx which is what i'll call european extreme from now on um and that first area with the tree roll and the stun grenade they just quit because it was too hard i was one of them for a long time um when i first tried to learn mgs tree i quit because of it so it's it's it might not look difficult but trust me it's it's pretty bad yeah, so we pick up the cardboard box going into our first, uh, not really a boss, but it's kind of a, a boss encounter. We're going to have uh, the Ocelot unit, which is coming. Chowder. Chowder? Clouder. Ch Clouder. Yes. You said Chowder. Yes, as much as I'm watching. <laughs> All right. So we're going to get some... Because I'm not. <laughs> All right. So uh, we're going to get out our mark 22 we're gonna shoot this guy in the chest we're gonna run around out the door we're gonna go over aim through this and shoot this guy in the head we're gonna go finish this guy off by putting another one into his chest we're gonna roll over pick up the stun grenade lean around the corner throw the stun grenade on the floor my god you faster sure and you want me to slow down <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna pick up the sniper on the roof that's gonna leave us with three left right we're gonna you. have one over on the far end of the map we're gonna put one into his head I just Which, lowered the uh, right you. I pressed square, but Snake decided shooting was against his moral values. So, I mean, it happens. We're gonna just uh, we're gonna blind fire that guy. Mm -hmm. He will always go down. What I and meant the last was, last guy is gonna fall down right on time as we finish the fight. What I meant to say there was, I think I was going too fast, so I slowed down to let you catch up. <laughs> nah, it's just 
You see the controls there in this game a... are weird, right? And you're guessing you can confirm that I'm not just talking nonsense. Like you uh, just... the controls in this in this game at certain times are what I would like to refer to as ass. Yeah, so you use square to shoot, right? And sometimes if you don't let go of square just the right way, snake won't fire. He'll just lower his weapon. And you're left looking like an idiot. Because obviously I expected the gun to fire and my immediate reaction was, oh well, better better keep going. But no, it turns out I missed. So whatever. It's like a couple of seconds of time loss. Right. I'm just We're going to bug you in here so we don't, we don't get a... Uh... A leech. Leeches drain your stamina and they require going into the heal menu and burning them off with a cigar to get rid of. Uh, we don't want to go into the heal menu any more than like three times in this one and they're all pretty much mandatory. Um, so we avoid a leech and we're out of here. So you also saw before the ocelot encounter, uh, we picked up a cardboard box. For whatever reason, when this game was programmed all the way back in like 2005 or whatever it was for the PS2, uh, the animation for running whilst inside of a cardboard box, it negates terrain. So you'll see at certain times Raichu has been rolling up hills because you walk slower up hills, but with the box out, uh, you don't have to roll, and running with the box is faster. So we're going to shoot this fence to get a dog's attention. Uh, we need their attention, otherwise you're just instantly going to get seen as soon as you drop down. So as well, it calls for a guard who'd be patrolling around this area. So there's a guy by like, what out uh, around here, where I'm standing right this second. Um, the dog gets rid of him, because otherwise he's just a pain. And we really need to be quick. Uh, you know, Iridescence mentioned earlier about cycles, because that last dog, if you're slow, you're done. He's gonna see you. And yes, dogs cause alerts. Dogs will give you a game over. They are the smartest of boys. Um, so, with that, you'll notice that under Snake's health bar, there is another bar, and that is a stamina bar. Now, this game for its time had really good survival mechanics. You know, you have to eat. You have to heal yourself if you get injured. Uh, but... There's some AI abuse for you as we go into the second boss. This boss is a loop, but this loop takes a lot of concentration and precision. So, we're going to shoot him in the back after we remove our suppressor. We're going to throw a stun grenade. It's going to land behind him so he turns around in a weird way. We're going to shoot him in the head. We're then going to throw another stun grenade. We're going to dodge so we don't get shot too many times. We're going to shoot the Markor in the background. This is going to get his attention. We're going to shoot him in the head one more time. He's going to see the Markor. We're going to shoot off his hat, shoot him in the head. And then put one more into his head, and on the chest, on the last shot, and that is the fight. And that was that, that easy. looks that that is not easy. He's full of <laughs> shit. <laughs> it was. It takes practice and a lot of it, but that's why I tried to kill us a lot early. But the game wouldn't let me. All right. If you can't see anything, don't worry. Neither can we. Um, yeah, I'm just like the gate. I'm putting my hands out in front of me. I'm just touching the walls, trying to figure out where I'm going. <laughs> so, most of us use TVs with absurd brightness to get around the fact that the game wants you to either A, find a torch, or B, stand around in the darkness till Snake's eyes adjust. Which is actually something uh, that happens, by the way. And that is so... It, yes. It's like, silly as it is to assume that one might stand in place for hours, after like 15 minutes or so, maybe a little less, you actually start to see properly, because Snake's eyes... Like, it's just... The level of detail that they went through when they developed the game is just ridiculous. I mean, oh, it's dark? Yeah, just sit here for five minutes and your eyes will adjust. Just like real life. Exactly right. So, uh, most of us can either use a TV that's super bright or we just know. You just kind of hold upright and you can count Snake's footsteps. It's pretty... But once you've done it enough times, it becomes, like, routine. You kind of just know what you're doing. Exactly right. So beating Ocelot with a non-lethal method actually gave us the animal's camo, and we'll be equipping that a little later on. That stops our aim from shaking, um, if you are aiming down sights with low stamina. But, we're gonna fight the pain, and the pain is B-Boy. He's got hornets. So we're gonna... Oh we're gonna get out some smoke grenades and some grenades, because we're gonna need them for this fight. So we're gonna throw a smoke grenade, and this is gonna stop him from moving. 
I'm gonna aim for the head. His head hitbox is hot garbage. Um, so we're gonna throw the smoke grenades. Uh, his head hitbox is kind of from his fat chin to his eyeballs. Anything yeah. above that, it won't hit. Yeah, it's really quite weird. Like, you aim where you'd expect a head to count, but it doesn't work. Yeah. And I believe, like, right on the top of his bald ass head is also his hitbox. So when he's crouched over like that after you kind of blow up his bees, that's also his head. But it's impossible to hit that unless he's bent over and facing like, like, like that. So it's... I don't know, they really just mess that up. And it's not just the HD collection either. Um, <clears throat> it's, That's just the game. Yeah, it's the PS2, everything. Now, one thing they did also mess up on the HD collection, which is... Or, well, I say mess up, but it's a good kind of a mess up. Was when he fires his bullet bees like that, um, looking in first person, they just don't hurt me for some reason. Yeah, so they, they, they furious. <laughs> But only the bullet bees, unfortunately. Yeah, all so, other damage still counts. So we're in the caves. Right now, you'll see most runners are going to use. There's two different camera modes that this version of the game provides. There is the snake ear the camera, which is the fixed camera, which is what you're going to see Raichu use for the majority of the run. Uh, and then there's the 3D camera, which is kind of like a third person view. Um, however, we're on PS3, and certain areas using the 3D camera causes the frame rate to tank. Frame rate tanking causes time loss. Uh, and also, there's no consistency for certain setups. So, whilst we swim through this river, which is a relatively mundane kind of the run, uh, we're gonna push some fish out of the way. Uh, we're gonna be coming up to what is, and I will literally get into a fisticuffs with anybody who argues with me, the hardest room in the game, and we've gotta go through it twice. Yeah, uh, it's I known mean, as warehouse. It's so bad. <laughs> and like the room itself casually isn't too bad, but the crazy, crazy people who came up with the speed strats for this room obviously cared none for anybody's mental health because <laughs> it is absolutely bonkers and requires insane precision. Explain, Akari. Um, yeah, it, it's it was probably it's his not fault. fun. Yeah, alright. So, exterior. We need to shoot some things with our gun, um, because shots fired and all. So first of all, we're gonna shoot a barrel, uh, put a guy to sleep, shoot two barrels. That's gonna do some damage to the end. That's a boss that is pretty famous, and he's gonna come up later. No, we don't quick kill the end. I'm not gonna answer any questions as to why, it's if slower. you ask, because it's obvious. Uh, if we don't do it, it's probably slower. We're gonna pick up some stun grenades, some Mark 22 bullets, and some smoke grenades here for a strat later on. And uh, we're gonna go into the warehouse. No one loves warehouse, Collier. No one. All right, so we're gonna roll up these stairs. Now we need to do a perfect roll over this railing that lands us on the other side of this box, which is a pretty good roll. We're now gonna bump roll up the stairs and equip the box. If you don't get at least a certain way up the stairs, you'll instantly get seen. And we're gonna do this for the three guards. Uh, and cool, we got through our house first time pretty well. I hate that whole section of the game, honestly. Like, the exterior is so chill and easy, and then you go in there and it's like, oh no. Now, there are some, like, I guess, quote-unquote, safer, a little, a little bit slower strats, but that's the one I choose. That was ripped from the multi-segment, I believe. And some... Yeah, it is. So a crazy person came up with it, and then a bunch of other crazy people decided... Hey, that's a multi-segment strat. I'm gonna use that in all my runs from now on. And it's not that bad, to be fair. So the other strat that's used, um, a brief explanation is... Oh, it's also important to mention, we did blow people up at barrels, but this game doesn't count that. Doesn't count. That's an accident. That That's that's an accident. You if can also throw them into water if you wanted. What do you yep. so, <laughs> so if... Uh, if you throw somebody into water technically like if you don't directly kill somebody in this game the game's just like oh well that's an accident if you've ever played like hitman blood money it's the same kind of thing um as long as you don't directly cause the death game doesn't care all right so we're gonna be going into lab here and we're gonna be chucking on a uniform to help us be disguised as you can see all scientists wear bandanas and face paint 
Yeah, of course. Um, if you're not wearing the bandana, how are you going to protect your eyes in the event of a chemical leak? I mean, thanks. I love how they include the glasses too, just to just to finish the disguise. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't be authentic uh, otherwise. And he's the only scientist in here that actually wears glasses as well. I mean, yeah, he's also so the, the guards. The guards don't know who we are, but scientists can uh, find out. It's like, hey, this guy doesn't work here. What is this nonsense? So we can just run past all these guards willy-nilly, but uh, these guys uh, in this room, uh, they will kind of get suspicious. So we're going to bump that guy to throw off his trail, and we're going to roll into this cutscene uh, where we speak to Grennan. He's going to give us a data chip out of his shoe. Yeah, so bumping into scientists kind of resets their uh, AI a little bit. So they just kind of, they get confused about the fact that they were bumped into. They also get confused around boxes. So if you thought, oh, the guards are stupid and the scientists are pretty smart, no. No. Yeah, bo boxes, they, they don't know what to do when they see a walking box. They have no idea. So we're going to pick up some, uh, we're going to pick up a vape. Um, a vape that knocks people out. Well, that's, that's pretty much what it is, right? <laughs> pretty much it. <laughs> so, uh, we're going to use that in the future. Uh, pretty soon actually um, we need it uh, for a couple of areas and it's kind of a really cool gadget it was clearly taken from Kojima's uh, love of James Bond but now we're gonna see an out-of-bounds clip this saves one second and it's really hard but right you got it straight away so we shift our weight oh, whilst practicing. we're in the vent <laughs> we, sh we shift our weight uh, in the vent and it pushes us through the wall uh, which messes up the room order, and as you see, we like rolled out of the uh, out of the building and into a load zone that you shouldn't really be able to hit otherwise. Uh, yeah, but so we're out, so we gotta check the an animals camo on now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing what happens is when Snake gets into a vent, the game is like, well, walls don't need to exist anymore. Well, um, it saves on memory. Remember, this was made for PS2. So yeah, that's what I mean. Uh, that's if, if you want an explanation of why it works, because I guess some people do, that's probably why. Unfortunately, MGS3 is pretty neglected as far as, like, the Metal Gear speedruns go. Um, it hasn't really been looked into as deeply as some of the other ones. So a lot of the time when someone asks, how come that works? It's like... It know. just does. <laughs> yeah. Like... I don't know. <laughs> All right. So this this next boss, he is the fear, and he's one scary, scary boy. He's so scary. In fact, we're gonna kill him with his own trap. Uh, we don't want to actually touch him. We might catch something. Yeah, I don't wanna so put my hands near that. we're gonna get poisoned in a cutscene, and we're gonna roll under this rope. We're gonna kill ourselves um, because we do that here. Scared. He's gonna, we just died from the fear. So he's gonna run up behind us, and uh, Got we're gonna wait for him to start, start walking towards us we're gonna revive throw the stun grenade right in front of us which is gonna stun him we're gonna hit the trap and he's gonna fall right in front of us. we're gonna punch him a little bit and he died so that was a non-lethal kill even though you would think a big spiky like log would absolutely just body anybody uh however this game has some wacky programming and uh any damage dealt to the fear whilst he's under the effect of a stun grenade is for some reason non-lethal you can pump him full of lead, and it will still class as a non-lethal kill. Oh, God bless the game for it. Now, that's not exactly like a speedrunner's trick. I mean, that trick's been known about for donkey's years, I think. I mean, I remember even as a, a young lad. Right. Break a leg right you. Hang on. Nice. Shut up. I'm just gonna... Shh. Well, Ooh. Because this area sucks. All right, this area sucks, and I'll explain this. So the first thing we need to do is roll off the edge and land on a guard. In the process, we're gonna break our leg. We'll equip, we'll equip the box and pop out of the box, and we'll do what we call a box headshot. So when we come out of the box, Snake is on the perfect plane to do a headshot, just like that, right in the top of his scone. Uh That is really difficult and requires really precise timing. I feel like it requires luck too, <laughs> and a little bit of luck. Like it's, it's a thing. We're it's gonna like, get a call from Eva here. You've not seen her yet, but she oh exists. yeah, you would have. She exists. I mean, she, she rides a bike. She keeps calling me. She keeps like low key. Eva's probably the coolest character in this whole game. She's better than Snake, if you ask me. Um, yeah. You know. I don't know, dude. I, I last time I ran this game in a marathon, she was my least favorite character. <laughs> Fair. I'll explain when we get up to that point. 
So this area is all movement, right? So movement, some gun shooting. I am shoot gunner. Oh wait, that's a different game. Um, <laughs> that, that's gonna shoot. Huh? The enemy's here. So a lot of juking, a lot of movement, a lot of tricking, and just being a general stealth ninja. Being a general yeah. nuisance as well, scaring the scaring the piss out of some people. It's no big deal. Yeah. So the thing is, uh, with the AI in this game, is uh, it's very <laughs> manipulable. Like pretty much all the AI in every Metal Gear Solid game is somewhat able to be manipulated, except for like MGS One, because they are actually so dumb. They're better guards than the later games. It's um. It's true. So. And actually, what you'll see is Raichu shot a tree, and he will always go to a predetermined spot. And uh, we need to not get shot by the end here. So we're going to roll a the box and a smoke grenade. We're going to pop out of the box for a moment. No, we're not. We don't throw a smoke grenade here anymore. The, the strat has changed. Uh, no, I'm oh, just an you idiot. got it. So we're going to have to. We're going to have to pop that out. Oh, no. Uh, oh, this is bad. So. This is bad. So, the thing is, is the end doesn't kill you. Uh, he uses a sniper rifle with tranquilizer darts, and he carries you all the way back to the lab. And I'm not sure what to do. <laughs> oh no, this is so. This has never happened is, before to me. Uh, losing to the end is kind of bad. Um, because now no one practices failing this strat. Oh wait, I know what to do. I can just put my scientist uniform on. Um... <clears throat> I didn't... Okay, that shot should have hit him, but whatever. Uh... Oh, Christ. So... This just goes from bad to worse. Right, so we've lost a couple of minutes, honestly. Um... <laughs> if we'll be perfectly honest. Also, you're poisoned. You got yeah, hit by I'll, a scorpion. I'll deal with that in a second. So... This is, uh... This is iridescence making up shit to talk about because this never happens. So, on the bright side, we can we can leave. Uh, we are slowly dying thanks to a scorpion who really doesn't like Raichu. He looked at him funny or some something. I don't know. Uh, so we're we're gonna leave here. But the thing is, this portion is gonna stick and it's gonna change the paths and the AI of all the guards and. Get. Your scientist lab ex only works inside. Once you're outside, if you get seen I in this uniform, uh, yeah, because if I get, if if they see me, they'll bring me back to the cell. So it's just easier to take and continue. And now taking we can just... and continue will reset the alert. So if we just rewind back to uh, before we fought the fear <laughs> and pretend none of this happened. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh dear. I'm not even sure what to say, like I'm just speechless that that happened. I completely forgot to throw the smoke grenade like I was supposed to. Oh my. Yeah, I was a tad confused, but it's okay. We've got to... Uh, the main reason I <clears throat> forgot to, as I was about to say, when, because I forgot to say it earlier, when you're in a, when the guards are like scared or spooked into caution, they react a bit differently. Their AI goes a bit odd. So they don't hear footsteps. And they also get like terrible tunnel vision. Um, which helps some of these like strats that we use work. Yeah. Uh, you'll see later just how exploitable and how like for lack of a better phrase. Stupid guards can be when they're scared. Um, aside from being scared of, like, shots, they will also react in a similar way if they see another guard go down, whether he's been killed or put to sleep. Uh, we can exploit that, and we will do in a little while. So now we get to deal with the warehouse again. Huh? Yeah, Luckily nothing changes here. Yes. Yeah. So it's all the Everything same. just resets. Everything just resets. So, we just gotta hope that rolling doesn't kill you. Ooh. Alright, so we knock him out. And no, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> about getting killed by the roll. <laughs> oh crap, the caution is gonna stick now as well. Okay. Hmm. Oh, there's no, uh. No, because there's no cutscene. There's no cutscene. That's fine. Alright, another continue and 
we're back to normal. Honestly, I'm not sure how well the guards react. Oh, okay. There's guards in a room that they're never normally in. Interesting. All right. So this is going well. Oh no. I don't know if the end is going to be in the same place. Uh, he should be. But if, if he's not, um, if he's not, if it's all right with Matt and the restreamer, I'm gonna quickly switch to another account with saves and just load a Civi Asset Gordy save. You can keep the timer running, I'll tank the time loss from it, but the enemy's here. believe you me, it'll be much faster for me to load a save than trying to find the end again and all of that nonsense. Okay, so the thing is with the end is this boss fight goes over four rooms and uh, when we use the Konami code, I'm gonna, okay. Uh, so it goes over four rooms and at the start, he's always in a predictable spot. Uh, and as long as he doesn't get booked, he will stay there until you go up and find him. Uh, however, because, you know, he's dragged us all the way back off to the cell, which is huh? a sad day for all on Earth. Um, it's, it's not about knowing where he is. It's If he's in different areas, the strat I want to use to be him won't work. I'm just gonna... Oh, it's my stomach crumbles. Alright. Um, okay. So I'm just going to... And because I'm doing that, I'm just gonna. I have to turn off my capture card for a second, and then, um, yeah, it's a whole thing. So just give me like yeah. one sec. Because my so capture card is weird. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, my capture card also wigs out if I go to the XMB. But um, so fish and mail is later. You'll see that on my run later. But um, so. The issue is with using the Yeah, apologies. Uh, check your cables are properly secure and connected. <clears throat> yeah, but it's just a capture card issue I have. Yeah, most um, capture cards really don't like PlayStation 3s because especially the resolution. Especially this one, I hate it. If I change game or anything, this happens, so don't mind it. I just have to quickly restart the capture card and it's fine. Anyway. So... I'll explain something real quick here. Uh, the reason Raichu opted to do the run on an account that doesn't have practice and or backup saves is because, as you can see, this checking hard disk drive takes a long time. And uh, even with a solid state, which is what Raichu is currently using, it's awful. Be my own save. Yeah, so... It should be... Yeah. So, um... If you don't have any saves, that goes way quicker. And in this game, you run the risk of uh, mashing into a save prompt, uh, and that will literally lose you a long time. Yeah, PS3 loading times. Uh, there is a way to speed the loading times up for this game, but it requires 40 minutes pre-run preparation, and yeah, it's right. it's ridiculous. You need to play through the majority of the game and then like exit to main menu, and the game will load faster because PlayStation 3. So actually, what was it. happening there was snake stomach was going off, um, and that's why that guy kept seeing me. But yeah, no, I've I've had that happen where the end gets me in practice and stuff, and. I'm 99% sure he goes off to a different area altogether, so... Alright, don't forget to get your smoke grenades out. I'm gonna show my Hold smoke on. grenade. So, now we're at the end again. Um, I'm gonna show a smoke grenade. I have less smoke grenades than I usually... Oh no, I'm perfectly fine, never mind. Um, yeah, so the smoke grenade shields us, so this doesn't happen. Um... And you might notice that the end has got some damage. That's from when we shot him with a barrel earlier. Um, 
Uh, that's multi-segment strats, and I mean this is basically a multi-segment now, but in general. Okay, use, uh... why not go for the time kill? Uh, you can't save the game in a single segment run. Yes. You can't save the game and quit out and change your clock, get no. it to die over time. Also, <laughs> we need his gun. We also are, need his gun. That, that as well, that's really important. Um, also, I mean, I'm all aware that you can't just load saves left and right, but this is a marathon and I don't have... I don't think Matt Matt will be very happy with me if I spend an hour on the end. <laughs> this, this, this fight traditionally can take a long time casually, so... He runs away a lot, so, but we're gonna sneak up behind him, so the first thing you're gonna see Raichu do is we're gonna- Have you got the cigar spray out of your bag? Oh yeah, no. Um, freeze. Um, so we're gonna run up behind him, cooking a grenade so he can't hear us. We're gonna look at him, and on HDC, if you look at him and hit him with the cigar spray, it does extra damage. It- one spray counts as two hits. That's for some yeah. reason. On PS2, the same thing works, but you have to crouch. Um, so it's just like- a weird little bug, I guess they didn't expect people to. And it only seems to work on the end as far as I'm out of snake. Uh, not sure what you're stung with it? Okay, that's fine. Alright, so, wow, he didn't throw a stun grenade when he ran away. Mm, so, what we did there was... Oh, health. Oh, I hate the end, dude. So we get him in the low zone, it's uh, fine, don't worry about it, I'm just, let's just get me out of here for Christ's sake. <laughs> Alright, he's done. Like, right. you saw that, right? He had no health left. And he yeah, and yeah, around. he had one HP, it's kind of really dumb, it's a thing that happens with the HDC, uh, when they made the 16 by 9 screen ratio, the health bars got balked a little bit, but it's okay, we're, we're out of here. We're, we've got the box, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna get out. Do not such as the most of the gun. Do not GG me for this. Don't don't you dare. Uh, <laughs> this is And this also is we're only halfway through the game, not even. So we're actually we have a while yet. Halfway. Mountains well, I mean, is about the halfway point, I would say, in fairness. I don't know. There's I like mean, with the bike auto scroller. <sighs> I am very upset. So I'm gonna sit quietly and let you all listen to the music. I'm not gonna stay quiet. Well, I can't. Uh, this is a. Whether I want to keep this, is a, this game or not. This is a ladder. It's really big. Ask me anything. I have a question. Why yep. do I run this game? <laughs> because why are we born unto suffering, right you? Jeez. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> the, like, this is probably the one thing that um, I was terrified of happening at like GDQ so I'm I hope because it happened here it won't happen there <laughs> uh, how big is the ladder? the ladder is about a minute and 30 seconds worth of holding the analog stick up okay, so we have some hot analog stick strats right now this is the time that most runners will use to I don't know do whatever they do yeah, so this run is going to be at, in Florida at AGDQ 2020. Uh, he's going all the way from Ireland to Florida for some reason. People go to Florida and I don't know. Maybe safe starting by eating some food. Eating food will not help us. That's why we have the camo. Uh, it will stop us from uh, our aim being all muddled up. Uh, ration? There is no rations in MGS3. We have life meds, right? You picked them up before the pain. Uh, and that'll be used later on just as a safety strat. Yeah, uh, so ge generally we don't use them, but yeah. uh, they're there in case. The, re the reason I pick it up is during the bike chase, um, there's an area called Lazarevo. It's on the second phase of the bike chase, I guess you could say. And it is hell. Um, there's some dudes on hoverboards or something, and Hobbit they can just they can just fly right above your head, shoot you indefinitely, and you can't do anything about it. Yeah, you can't hit them back because of the angle. Snake apparently can't do it. So all I, right, so mountain rolling. We like to roll here, huh? lots uh, of times. In fact. So we need to put this guy to sleep with cigar spray. I got out of the box too early. That's all that happened. That's my fault. Uh, you the the Cold War camo. Yeah, that's a drat that new runners can use. 
um, they non lethally kill Volgan, pick up the Cold War ammo so they don't get shot. Yeah, the thing about the Cold War camo is it might be good for New Game Plus, but that's also debatable. Just because you might know, like, you want to open the start menu as few times as possible. Um, just because huh? it's pretty slow to do that. Um, I'm. I'm just gonna sit here quietly and do the mountains. I'm feeling a little bit annoyed right now, and I'm wondering why I'm here. He's triggered. He'll be okay though. A little bit, yeah. Like this game, this run, like it, it looks like it's going all pear shaped, and it kind of is. But this run is brutally punishing. Like, uh, like I said to Iridescence this morning when I woke up, I feel like absolute crap today and this isn't helping so i'm not in the best frame of mind to be doing this but i didn't want to drop out at the last minute and cause matt matt undue stress so i'm pushing through we'll get her done the mountains is like a really hard area um they just kind of the difficulty spikes in this game are odd because you kind of go from at the start really 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 hard to pretty chill the warehouse is bloody difficult. Chill. Back to the warehouse where it's really hard. Everything's a bit easy. And then you get into the mountains and it's like hell spawn. And the rest of the game from there, it's not so bad, but the mountains is bad. But I've oh yeah, we shot that guy. I'm gonna try. We didn't and see it. Yeah, we did. We knocked out a guard as we entered the room because auto aim is great. Right, we're gonna make an no, idiot fun. out of this guy. Uh -huh. Yeah, this, this guy's a, a bit of a doofus. Um, Fox gets caught on everything. So, one of the things that, like, uh, look what the PS2 can do. We can put collision on the flaps of the box, which tends to collide with everything and get stuck on everything. And, ugh. Right, we're going to sleep these two guys. They've been awake too long. Mama says go to bed. Mama says knock you out. Um... This last guy, we're just gonna kind of bump roll him. Uh, see that hitbox? It's atrocious. Obviously, Snake was about 10 meters away from him. He just went flying anyway. Yeah, Snake is gonna be hungry for the majority of the run. This movement is very precise. We need this guy to hear our footsteps, and we need to roll over his field of vision. Uh, run no. up here. So we've we got a caution, which we want, but... That roll, that Raichu rolled onto the ledge, this is going to take some backup strutting because now the cycles are going to be all kind of effed up. And so, he's okay, he's just going to hide. Okay, we got all right, it. cool, we, we got through. <clears throat> so we're, fortunately, we're, we're through. Um, and apologies the helicopters really loud. Fortunately, when they hear footsteps, they just kind of tend to look where they are, not exactly like so he heard the footsteps but he looked straight ahead of where they are instead of looking up to where they came from so it's kind of fortunately we can kind of juke guards with our footsteps quite a lot um there's not too many instances out of on uex because it's a bit dangerous to do that but i have a strat on normal that's stupid <laughs> that uses it um i'm picking up those noodles because the game has decided today is a bad day and i'm afraid of it not giving to me at the end of the game Nine times out of ten it does, but I feel like today would be the ten time where it didn't, so. This All roll right, is really so hard, even though it doesn't look yeah, like we it. You need to roll up here, and this roll is really difficult. And in saying that, uh, this is where use of the 3D camera comes in handy, and Raichu will use it uh, to make that roll. The camera is suboptimal on the way back. And so we're gonna we're gonna navigate some stairs. I'm not sure how you guys go down stairwells, but this is how I do it on a daily basis. Well, I'm just saying, if you don't go down stairs like this, your life is suboptimal, and you need to correct that immediately. All right. So not to jinx anything, but here comes the Fury. The Fury is a grade A dick. He can do what he wants, when he wants, however he wants to do it. And uh, we need to kill him, but Raichu's gonna try and get a loop going, so 
My shoot's been ripped. Run off the boom. I don't know. I don't have audio. All right, he's going to the right. So we're gonna put three shots into him. He's gonna fall down. Dead. We're gonna get him to throw a uh, shot at us with his uh, thing, and he's gonna fly behind us. We're gonna put another couple of shots into him. And we're gonna avoid getting shot by the flamethrower. Oh, no, we're gonna no, stop no, him from no, no, flying no, no, no. away. Oh, Damn it. Fell or whatever. That's fine. Right. I'd rather he flew gone. away than I got killed. Oh, the loop has gone the minute he went right. <laughs> you can't the loop, loop him is... the same way if he goes right. You have to be. He has to go to the left. It's like Olga. Oh, yeah. Except so if he goes Olga right. Olga have a flamethrower. Well, I don't know, man. She's been bodying me in practice. So if she goes right, if he goes right, uh, his AI is really difficult to manipulate. You can still loop, but it's not the same. And so, oh. I, now, I should right, have been so dead there like five times over, but because I loaded a save, Snake had full health, so I got away with it. But yeah, whatever. If he goes left, you can just destroy him because you just keep him in a cycle of trying to fly away and trying to hurt you. Um. But when he goes right, things get a bit funky. He can just behave yeah. completely differently. And going right doesn't always mean death, but it means for sure you're losing time compared to a left fury. Um, but even when he and goes there's left, there's no way. Even when he goes there's left, there's no way to manipulate it either. Like no, it is oh, 100% random. No, it's movement. I just had bad movement. That's why. Oh yes, um. uh, we all thought for a long time. Um, it was random. It's not. It's your movement. Thank God, but... I say thank God, but, like... I guess... There is no God here. No, just pain. Um, <clears throat> what kind of God would allow a run like this to continue? <laughs> so we're showing right. off how stupid they are. Right. Um, so, what's happened here is this guard saw his mate go down. So, he... That's all he cares about. Old mate Bill has fallen asleep on the job and we better, you know, wake him up so he can punch his time card or something. Yeah, so like, the AI has levels of priority. Um, a fallen soldier is more important than a box. However, a fallen snake is more important than a fallen soldier. But because I'm hidden by the box, it's just like, that's an irrelevance to them. So we're bullying Rykov a little bit. Yeah, so we're gonna shoot him with the tranquilizer gun and throw a smoke grenade. We're gonna bump into him, roll through him. He's been hit with a trank, so that means he's gonna be asleep. Uh, we're gonna get seen by, like, like a caution from the smoke grenade, but this is okay. We need this, um, so that their cycles, no one will run up here and uh, interrupt us. This is a relatively newer way of doing this strat, and it's made life a lot easier for a lot of people. Yeah, so it's also, like, a couple of seconds faster than what we used to do, so the... Because this is all fairly boring at this point, there's nothing going on right now. I'm about to put on a uniform and go and uh, get into places I shouldn't be. Also, ugh, come on, new game. We're gonna get we're gonna get groped and beaten. It's uh, pretty kinky. But the usual, the old way did it was we used to come in with an unsuppressed weapon, cause a caution by using a, I think plywood refers to it as a warning shot, and then kind of Rykov would go to a radio we'd sneak up there in our box and when he was finished his call we'd throw him to the ground and then we'd drag him to the locker room but doing it that way is a bit more direct um and a couple of seconds faster and there's one other way of doing it that i know of that's like a multi-segment strap but that is it's dumb it's, it's dumb. so hard there's one or two runs i know of that use it in the single segment set and I don't know how they did it. <laughs> I can only imagine how nervous you'd be on Fox Sound coming in there and you're about to pull that strat off. I mean, it must be mind like bending. This area right. is pretty horrible, so. Kill me. Stop if you're squeamish to the sound of somebody oh, getting the shit beaten out of them and the sound of women's screams, I recommend you mute now until you see Snake in the prison cell. Uh, this is a warning that most runners would give because some people can't deal with it. Like, yeah, it's not the English version is not so bad, but the Japanese version, this scene sounds absolutely horrifying. The Japanese is actually harrowing. It's and that's why I run it. I have no soul. No, I'm kidding. I run it because so I run it because circle to confirm, but that's okay. Yeah, it makes a lot more sense when you're doing match foot scene and stuff. So I'm like five minutes behind where I'd usually be here because Guess of the shenanigans dead. at the end, but we should. Hopefully, if nothing else goes too bad, we might finish under us if I'm really lucky. I mean, honestly, all things that's happened, like this gun 
yeah pretty Aside bad from, like, like the end it hasn't gone that bad yeah that's, i mean it happens yeah everybody has a bad one mine was today <laughs> but I, especially I in, in the no reset environments that. yeah well that's it like i mean if that happened to me in pb attempts i'm like i just take it on the chin and reset you know it's no big deal so when you get into marathons, it's like beautiful oh, oh. body you have. I blame Cola. He and said put he uh, Cola. He said five bucks for Foxhound, and he just ruined everything. That was your fault, Claudia. Did I blame you? But not for um, long. Also, hi Apache. Well, Apache, then, another MGF tree runner. Let's get started. Yeah, he stole my world record, and I'll never forgive him for it. What is your target? Yeah. Well, record, the I'll, uh, Apache. Is it the Shagohod? <laughs> or Sokolov? But it's okay. Or maybe it's the uh, legacy. We're, we're buds. So <laughs> now, uh, who is helping? Snake fed his right eye and lost. Who uh, let he's you been in shot in the face. <laughs> um, we need to get out of prison, and there is two ways Even we can do you this. Must have your limits. Uh, you can. I am does a L load L two trick still work? Yes, you can hold that. Yes, it does. It's just pointless. Yeah, we can just remember the frequency. Anyway, it's I know uh, what he means is when you hold the menus open to stop you taking damage. Oh yeah, but it doesn't matter. You got a set amount of damage when you appear in the cell anyway. It's for health and health only really run. worked doing on like casual fox sound oh runs where you might have what happened? where you might reach the damage threshold because there is a certain amount of life bars. Uh, that's one of the likes things I didn't mention about fox sound or neither of us mentioned. I should say, but in the speedrun, usually you shouldn't be taking more damage than what the route suggests. So the torture damage is kind of like whatever. Now if you want, you can definitely hold the menus open. But I do believe as well it is actually a time lapse to do that. Because of, um, menu please. Uh, you can't let go of the button at all and the cutscene doesn't fade out for a couple of seconds longer, if I recall correctly. So uh, either. something along the lines. Anyway, we're gonna throw some noodles at a dude. He's hungry, I'm not. What's that sound? He's, he's hungry. I'm not, I'm not so, interested. Snake, so, he uh, has like two life bars of stamina right here. What the hell do I need noodles for? <laughs> so, uh, throwing food out to guards will act very, like, it's a distraction, they'll go and eat it. You can throw like poison mushrooms and they'll eat it. They'll get poisoned. And yeah, there's some fun stuff you can do casually. Uh, so it's kind of funny because like the sound that we hear when the food is the like beeping sound or whatever, that's really? not just a noise that we hear. They also hear it, so it's kind of amusing. Oh, what were you gonna say? Yeah. Um, I've forgotten. Anyway, we're escaping. Uh, as you can see, Tempting somebody stuff. was nice enough to like bandage us up after we got, you know, tortured. So we're gonna throw that smoke grenade, and that's gonna make that guy just stare at it. Like, he doesn't know what else to do with his life other than stare at it. So we're gonna throw another one for the dog. Um, he's gonna, you know, cough and butter and... He doesn't like smoke. Uh, and we're out of here. Uh, we are going to hurt ourselves in a little while because it's fun, right? Um, we're gonna break a leg. Again. I think we break our leg like three times in this run. Yeah, smoke works on dogs. So, we're gonna take a phone call real quick. They're gonna tell us, you know, run to the exit of the thing. Uh, did you take the tracker out, Rachu? Yes. Okay, so... Uh, no, you won't get to see the phone strat, I'm afraid. We, we don't get any mushroom strats, but it's okay. So we're gonna break a leg. It's gonna help hurt us. Uh, you need your cigar equipped, my dude. That's a valid point. I almost forgot uh, that. I don't know why. So... Equipping the cigar is... We need to take damage. And the cigar can't kill you. Luckily, the cigar does a good amount of damage and you have a small health bar on European Extreme. Uh, our next boss is not really a boss. He's kind of just a suggestion. And the way like to beat -boss, said... I guess. Yeah, and the way to beat said suggestion is by just, you know, offing yourself. And, um... The, quick, the more damage you do to yourself here... Uh, the faster it is. So on European Extreme, we're gonna drown ourselves in just a little bit. Yeah, you know, we're gonna make Snake go out. Get a, <clears throat> a, grenade. a grenade. Yeah, well, you can drown yourself. You can blow yourself up. Grenade saves like a second or something. Yeah. It's a second if um, your menus are good. <laughs> Basically, yeah. just kill yourself ASAP. That's that's the general 
strat for yeah. the uh the sorrow so with the sorrow what a lot of people didn't realize about him is uh you don't have to walk all the way to the end you can just literally start here get your grenade out of your backpack which is weird because you don't actually have a backpack and um we just throw a grenade <laughs> on the floor and blow ourselves to the rings i guess this is basically just a um like a dream snake is in right now it's so, a, it's a nightmare yeah, yeah it is so you can just kind of have whatever he can have whatever he wants he kind of almost drowned again um and this is his i'm drowning you know death dream i don't sure. know yeah so Vegas basically like stand. Yeah, sorry i just hit off it so yeah like he's in the water he's been knocked unconscious because i mean you didn't see it but he jumped from like a thousand feet in the air into water <laughs> Which is ill-advised, nobody should do that. So he probably got knocked unconscious and all that kind of stuff. And then he was dreaming about being dead. But was it really yeah. a dream? Because if you finish it, you get the Sorrow's camouflage. That is true. You get the spirit camouflage, which silences your footsteps, and it looks pretty neat. No, that's not um, your footsteps. Smoke grenade. <laughs> and so, uh, so we're just going to go behind this brilliant waterfall. Um... It's majestic. Uh, if you want an example of PS3 load times, oh boy, you're gonna have a black screen for a while. Don't worry, the game didn't crash. It's not me speedrunning the game. Um, you're just gonna have a black screen for a while. There's like six cutscenes here that you can skip before anything starts, so it kind of just looks like the game is hanging. But eventually Snake will appear all dressed and nice. He's had a nice uh, picnic dinner with Eva. He tried to catch a butterfly of plastic explosives. Yeah, and, the game didn't uh, crash even if it looked like it did. And honestly, there have been times where I thought, oh, oh, oh no. <laughs> I'll, I'll, put, I'll put my hand up. Uh, I have had this game crash in a marathon run, so there you go. In fact, it made my disk drive explode in my PS3. Shit. I mean, I've crashed at the Escort a couple of times, but I believe that was due to a dodgy disk. But I don't know. Not but watching yeah. the catch cutscene. Well, catch cutscene not fast. Uh, we're gonna pick up a box though. We need this uh, box, and we're gonna do some menuing. We also need C three. I'm a fool. Um, yes. So I'll keep our life medicine out because, as I say, bike chase is terrifying. Um, <clears throat> the catch cutscene. What are you talking about? Uh, the catch cutscene where uh, you try and catch the butterfly. That's not the layer. Oh wait, no, no it's no, it's different. in there. It's the actual butterfly, not the yeah. explosive butterfly. I was gonna say, I'm like, no. I mean, I don't even know when that starts in those sets of cutscenes. That could be like 15 minutes in, for all I know. I mean, we removed the tracker. It, that part of the. All right, so we're gonna put a guy to sleep here, and we're gonna abuse the AI again. So we're gonna run right in front of him. He just, he just, he has no idea. Doesn't care. Mm -hmm. Priorities. And this is why the Soviet Union fell, of course. Um, yeah, Gumtree. Um, is Gumtree a thing in America? I, I don't know. Gumtree is like Craigslist, I guess. They, they will hide from Craigslist. Right, I'm gonna roll in front of the truck and then clip into the truck, kind of with a weird grab glitch that happens, and equip the box. So that's gonna fast travel us uh, into the Shagahod hangar. I feel like um, fast yeah. travel is actually the strap. I love it. Yeah, it's a. Uh, this oh, is no. this and MGS5 are the only two MGS games where fast traveling is valid strat. So we're gonna we're gonna shoot the fuel container. And uh, I do because... not recommend in real life that you shoot at fuel containers like ever. Just yeah, don't actually shoot at them. But uh, we need people, them to all also, run away. You might also kill yourself. So. <laughs> but I guess so if you're in a situation some... such as this, you know. Yeah, we're gonna put some bombs down. Now, engineers are just reskin scientists. They're just as stupid. They don't know what to do with the box. The only real risk here is uh, getting seen by one guard up there, or if an engineer sees you plant a bomb. Apparently, they don't like it when you plant bombs on their fuel tanks, and you it's get really the game over for that. And uh, where I come from, planting bombs on fuel tanks is fine. All right, we're gonna roll up these stairs, put the last bomb down, and we have successfully rigged the hangar to blow. Unfortunately, due to an oversight by Snake and Eva, they found the bombs and they're going to empty those fuel canisters at least partially. Yeah, an oversight uh, whilst such as planting them on the fucking floor beside it. An oversight such as a one million volt electric man. 
Uh, this is Volgan. You actually haven't seen Volgan yet. Uh, he is an electric man. We're gonna grab him, hold him by the throat, push him forward, pull out the SVD, and absolutely body him in the ass. Cool. you do this. Right. So I got a little bit too close. Yeah, yeah, yeah you got electrified. He's gonna try and shoot us. He's run around and throw him. Picked up some SSA bullets, and we're just gonna put another one in the back of his. Back, so we needed to keep uh, 20 SVD bullets because I need every single one of them for phase two. Right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay down. Uh, Vulcan can't deal when you lay down. He just can't hit you. So we're gonna spam 20 bullets, break his shield, a quick reload every time, and we're gonna quickly cycle through. And nice, 20 rounds into him, and that is Volgan. He is dead. That fight is hard to do lethal, and by, honestly. And by dead, I mean he's not actually dead. He's coming back with a vengeance on a gigantic robotic snail that can fire nuclear bombs. And the That's reason, as I read after, he's not actually dead, so that didn't technically count as a kill. And when I get a free hand, I will never uh, acknowledge this, this section. Yeah, you, you have to spam. Now, you might be able to see it, but we're doing, we do minuscule chip damage per rocket launcher shot. He's gonna, shot, he's gonna tell us we're wasting our ammo and all that Uh, that happens on the, on the runway. He'll be like, you're wasting your ammo! I Didn't know. feel a thing! Also, why did no guards spawn? Uh, if you do a certain amount of damage to the Shy God, guards will spawn. Because... This is a good game that's well made and well programmed. <laughs> it's really weird. Uh, it feels kind of random, honestly, but I swear it's up to how many shots you fire at the Shagard. Right, so when it comes to the speed reloading strat you're seeing right you do with the RPG, uh, rip fingers. Yeah, it hurts your hands really bad, but speed is better than pain. Pain is on a scale pain, of like... Pain is temporary, speed running is forever. Exactly. World records are more important than the pain, than arteritis. Touch of arteritis, we'll we know we do. Yeah, it's no big deal, what about it? It's alright. So, yeah, we're gonna throw some stun grenades to knock some people out. And uh, pull out the RPG again. We're gonna do some Shagahod shooting. You probably uh, wouldn't wanna snake. run this game if you had arteritis, honestly, because Christ. <laughs> That would be hell. Just run lower difficulties. The damage you do here is less important on lower difficulties. But um, yeah, we're gonna we're just gonna put some bullet, uh, rockets into them whenever we can. We can only do damage if we hit like the part underneath the front. Like you'll see like the soft square that you see Raichu's pumping rounds into, like where the axle connects. That's the only place you can do damage to him. Yeah, I um, guess that has no armor or something. I'm assuming is the uh, the speed lore for it. The speed law. The speed law is it does damage, so we shoot it. Um, now Eva is not a speedrunner, and she takes the most inefficient routes through this base that I've ever seen. Like, if she was an Uber driver, she'd be fired. Oh, dude, it's terrible. It's like she's like a cheap, like a really bad taxi driver, and she's just bringing you all around the slowest routes to make the most money. Yeah, to raise revenue. So, uh, uh -oh. the Kiratan, uh, that doesn't matter, we don't care about Kiratans. Actually, we will use one, though. It's conveniently placed for a strat. So yeah, it's actually... What we want to do... Okay, I'm gonna have to quickly shoot these guys. Yeah, so, uh, what we need to do here is, um, we're gonna shoot these guys because... So, if like... If we take too much damage, it's not fun. Well, it's not even that, it's certain guards have to be gone for Eva to keep going and my stun grenade placement was bad so I just had to trank them but the, the guys you really want to deal with above all else uh, are the RPG guards yeah because they will absolutely hand it to you like the AK right. guards are bad right if they're spamming you but 10 AK guards hasn't got a patch on one RPG guy so <laughs> you really prioritize those guys up on the roof and whatnot and there's another one on the far end of this area, over there about. So you really want to get rid of those guys ASAP. And for safety Luckily, sake. stun grenades are overpowered. I'm gonna switch to my Mark 22 because I don't need the stun grenade anymore. Oh no, I feel like I'm gonna get shot in the face by an RPG. Okay, we got him, good. That guy we have to get, if I didn't hit him, I was dead, as simple as that. Yeah, if you don't hit that guy, he will always hit you on the exit. He is right. like, 
you might Jedi. miss, but let me tell you one thing, he won't. <laughs> He'll teach you how to aim. Yep, so uh, now we're on the runway, and you don't actually have to shoot these guys if you have enough health. They won't do enough damage, but we do it for fun because we get to call multi-bike pileups. Look at that physics. Look at them go. Uh, and also, let's watch the if Raichu looks behind us, we're gonna get some glorious pop-in. Like, that's some PS2 era technology, that pop-in. So we're gonna spam, we're gonna aim for the drivers. Uh -oh. Sometimes we hit the guys in the sidecars, sometimes we call pile, cause pile-ups, sometimes don't. Like, now, this should take him- oh, it didn't get him. Oh well. If a bike even so much as touches another bike, it will just flip over out of control. It's <laughs> supposed to be very Hollywood. Like, this is Kijima's movie inspirations. He really wants to make movies, in case you didn't know. Just look at Death Stranding. Um, so we're gonna knock all the drivers out. Snake is almost dead, but we have life meds for that, just in case. That's the reason we picked them up. There is a total of three life meds in the whole run. Hey, we got them. <laughs> oh, yay, we're gonna cause a pile up. Let's go. <laughs> got him. Like, I was gonna be really upset if it didn't happen at least once. I look at it, it barely hit him, like it just brushed off the wheel and then the bike's out of control. Yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting thing. Alright, so now on the second part of the Grozny Grad runway, uh, we need to do a lot of damage to the Shagahod, and this is gonna just about destroy Raichu's right hand. Because uh, to do this, a lot of people don't know, to do this you need to hold three buttons and mash two. So it's it's not great. You need to hold L1, no, R1, square, and mash both square and uh, R2 to get to aim. Yeah, it's... It's garbage. You can flashbang them if you want, but it's more fun to just shoot them. It, it doesn't really make a difference. Well, the problem with stun grenades so, is they're less effective because you're driving at speed, so you kind of have to... Um, you have to lob them straight up in the air and it's kind or of in shit. front of you or whatever. And even then, sometimes you'll catch them. Uh, sometimes you'll catch them, sometimes you won't. So if you. Obviously, dying is unlikely there, but I'm not gonna test fate either. So we're actually like almost reached. This room, but... So we almost reached. And we're almost at damage threshold. Alright. So we can only really do so much damage to the Shadow Hod. Um, there is a threshold. We don't want to hit his treads, but. Uh, Alright, so Raichu is a professional COD player, if you didn't know, and uh, he will show you the art of the no-scope. Uh, it's really difficult, and it's really risky strat, so I don't recommend new people doing this. I mean, right, hell, I'll just... he's taking this to the extreme. Alright, we got one. I'll just no-scope the last one. Fuck it. So, this will cause one to swing down on a broken thing, and you gotta shoot it. Shago is not here yet, and she's gonna ask what are we doing, because we're not aiming. Yeah, Keep your aim steady. It's here! Oh look, we no scoped it, look at us go. You can also do want me, uh, Ross, yeah. you. <clears throat> you can also uh, shoot it with an M1911A1 if you want, but I don't recommend that. That's hard to do. Alright, Shagahod, what we uh, want to do is we want to shoot the opposite tread to the way Eva is driving. However, Eva is a doofus and she doesn't always obey. We can, we need to do damage to the back of the Shagahod. This is the only place we can actually do damage to the Shagahod, but if you get lucky, you can get two shots in per stun. So we're going to see Raichu shoot the opposite thing. However, uh, yeah, this is going to happen. It's fine. So thanks, Eva. Uh, where you just kind of circle around the same way, there isn't a whole lot you can do about it. Um, this happened to me in a race once, and she literally cost me three minutes of my life that I will never get back. <laughs> of just, she like drove right up, gave the Shagahod a hug, she did whatever she pleased. So uh, you, can get, you can get two shots off on him uh, per cycle, which is nice, but... I made a judgement call that was incorrect just there. I shouldn't have shot that shred. Snake, hit him. And also, you kind of just have to hit there, on the, around the corner. Yeah, if, if you hit the corner of the Shagahod, um, the splash damage will apply the damage. Um, you can't damage the Shagahod whilst the back of it is sparking. Uh, so that's kind of know how to time out your iframes. Like, you'll see those blue sparks that are flying out super fast. Um, if once those disappear, you'll see right through, yeah, now you can do damage to it again. 
Uh, so that's an uh, it's a convenient iframe timer, and uh, we need to get just one more shot in here. I actually thought I screwed up there, and she was going the other way. It's fine though. I thought she was going to go give him a hug. All right. So that is the Shagger Hod. It's broken now, so broken that one million volt man decides to rip out its cables and power it himself. So we're going to do a really quick motion shot, no, which missed. is actually hard to hit. Like missing it isn't detrimental. So we're going to pick up the RPG. We're going to shoot him in the tread. Eva's almost going to get crushed. Eva can run us over, by the way. She will, and she has done. All right, so he's gonna stop right in front of us. We're gonna shoot him in the head, and we're gonna go back to the RPG and shoot the tread. However, this is dangerously close. Yeah, he's yeah, too he's... close, so my rocket isn't hitting the iframe, but we should be good. All right, we can carry. As long as he doesn't start shooting missiles at us, we'll be okay. Um, and we just put a couple of rounds in his head. It takes four total headshots from the Mosin to end this fight. And as long as that laser doesn't hit you, we should be fine. One more RPG and one more shot to the head, and that'll be... Volgan, he's... He doesn't die. Um, he becomes Fireman in a later game that... Let's be honest, that was the stupidest thing they could ever have done with the character, but yeah. oh well. The for all intents and uh, purposes, he's now dead. So yeah, we got yeah, another pile-up, god bless. Yeah, we, we call it a pile-up with stun grenades. Um, there what they have go. You done today? So this, <laughs> you wouldn't download it. You wouldn't download a car. Yeah, you wouldn't download uh, so, a car pileup with stun grenades. So uh, we're getting chased on a bike again, again. You know, movie Kijima, yada yada yada. Uh, he never felt the thing exactly. We're gonna throw some stun grenades uh, to where these guys spawn, and they don't even move yet. They somehow flip out of control. It's kind of weird. Because yeah, if you get. If you get it right where they spawn, they never have a chance to start driving. But the lines of dialogue still play, despite the fact that they're all dead. <laughs> so, and like, watch, like if you right your turns around, like they'll have flipped out of control, but they never started moving. Like it's just like, yeah, so stupid. games like, oh, we better, we better apply some ragdoll physics. Yeah, I suppose they probably didn't expect that somebody would be a cheeky bastard and finish them, because the idea is that they ambush you. You're not supposed to know they're there. But obviously, when you speed in the game, you know everything about where everyone is, you know, for the most part. Yeah, exactly. We, we know where things are. Like, I don't think there's an enemy position I don't know about in this run. It's like, you have to know because it's how you plan your routes and whatnot. All right, Raichu, where is there, where are the enemies in the off break to get the SVD early, huh? Huh? In the little, huh? the little dock area? Yeah, yeah, there's two. I think there's three on UEX. Uh, but they're hanging out on the. We dock, don't go basically. there. Yeah, like just yeah, we don't go there. The... We don't care. That was that was me trolling, right? You, I'm just being a dick. Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> so it's good because the last two marathons I've done, I've gotten shot by an RPG guard at the last screen there, and it causes so much lag. You'd think I was playing this on my PS1. Um, didn't happen though. So, uh, the last run that I, I watched of this, uh, you, if you get shot by an RPG there, the game will literally drop to one frame per second. I am not exaggerating. And this is, this is a 60 FPS game, so, uh, it takes, like, 15 seconds, uh, to get out of there, and it's just a massive time loss. Okay, yeah, I think you're actually so still these... for about 10 seconds at least. It's re it's stupid. It's really dumb. It's like the smoke. The PlayStation 3 just can't handle the smoke effects. It's the smoke in this game that the PlayStation doesn't like. And if you think it's uh, bad, it's... um, just doing it menu while you're doing it, and then you'll know all about slow down. Oh my god, it's ridiculous. So and far, the worst is... part is the PS2 handles the smoke better than the PS3. Like. What are you trying to say? It's, it's actually, like a bad port or something? No. It's a questionable port. The best port of this game is actually the Xbox One port. Uh, and like, and when I say that, like, it's not the best in terms of like, uh, speed running or anything, but it's the most stable. It, it doesn't drop a frame. Um, so actually, yeah, we're just gonna pull out the RPG to shoot a log. If you don't the shoot the log, <laughs> you die. Yeah. I mean, this is probably the best laser I've ever had, honestly. Like, uh, I think I got mainly just because the aforementioned guard flying over my brain, head, and just shooting me to death somehow didn't happen. So that's good. Uh, that's always nice. Yeah, 
Also, you can get unlucky. Yes. Uh, you can be killed by a complete, like, force of nature in this scene. If you put a guy on a hoverboard to sleep and he crashes into a tree next to you, the AoE will hit you and you will die. Yeah, you can get caught on fire. You have to change your camouflage to extinguish it. It's so stupid. Luckily, I haven't died to it but before, but yeah, also, if the explosion is too close, it counts as, like, at, being shot by a bloody... wig. Um... I mean, I don't think Kojima was stripping balls at all in this game. It's this one of the best, best games. Yet. <laughs> yeah, like I, I, I kid you not. This is probably one of, if not the best games in terms of feature-rich gameplay on the PS2. I'm sure somebody would argue with me, like Kingdom Hearts fans, but um. Yeah, but what the hell did they? Uh, <laughs> I mean, they play a game of fucking Mickey Mouse in it. Like, I mean. <laughs> oh, God bless that tree, not touching to, the ground. To, to, to be fair, though, Raichu, if you play the 3DS version of this game, there's Yoshi's in it, so it's not a whole lot better. And yeah, don't play Snake Eater 3D. That's so play Snake Eater the 3D, and then you'll have an uh, like an appreciation for literally every other version. Yeah. I reckon, like emulator on my mobile phone would play it better than the 3DS version of this game. Like the 3DS version had some interesting tech, right? It had like photo camo and stuff. Also, we're done. I don't yeah, yeah, we're out of here. Uh, yeah, the 3DS version had like tilt controls and blowing on the freaking screen and. It was cool, but like, as far as games went, it looked crap. The problem as well okay. was the controls, really. That was the big thing. Nan Nan Nano machines didn't exist in the 60s, being guy. Yeah, there was no nano machines for MGS3. It was all real life. Nano, right? nano machines comes later. I, I get doped up with all the nano machines on the big shell. Don't you worry. I think as well, it's like when you're talking about like Kojima and MGS3, it's probably the most down to earth game he's ever more. made. Um, like it's the most, uh, save for like the Shagohod and, and a man with lightning and I guess the Cobras. They're a bit weird. <laughs> it's. But compared to MGS4... Oh, compared to MGS4, it's so mild. Also, we feed yeah. Eva... You might, if you've ever seen runs of this before, you're like, right, right, you, you donkey, you're feeding Eva too early. Uh, no, I'm not. I discovered this by accident when I wasn't paying enough attention. Um, and it turns out, if you feed Eva in this menu, she can last till the end of the escort, and you don't have to worry about it later. So it saves a... I it saves like, a menu. It saves like five seconds or thereabouts. Depending. It yeah. It saves five seconds depending because Eva's response to eating, she gives you like, you know, oh, that was lovely and oh, cheers, yeah. Bob, cheers, yeah. cheers, hen. Um, depending on which line of dialogue she gives you, loses you or saves you time. It's such a small little bit of randomness, but I could, if somebody ever tasked MGS3, that's something they'd have to deal with. <laughs> so we, we feed yeah. her there to avoid... Um, open the menu later and save a couple of seconds. Is yeah, it... so the cobras. Uh, I, I don't know quite what, know what you mean, but uh, yeah. So Eva has to follow us, and so there is some tech involved here. Uh, Eva cannot lose sight of us, otherwise she just forgets how to walk. Mm -hmm. And she can't get too close either. Um, Let anyone get too close to us? We're a lone soldier. If she gets too close, she'll stop. We're currently getting chased by some guards. Luckily, this conveniently placed ledge requiring two people is here for us to get away from them. Um, so we can't just, like, throw Eva in a ditch and run away. Even though I wish I could. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, crap. Um... Put Eva to sleep? That is incredibly right, slow. Just I was gonna time to continue because I missed my shot. Um... And it's faster just to take a continue there to back up strat all the guard. So this area is hard. You can't miss your shots because they're like the guards have like telepathy with each other or something. And um, if they get spooked, you'll end up with fifty guys just running to where you where you are somehow. They just no one that was a sketchy shot if ever I saw one. Ooh. So we need Here. to like take this guy at that you're so lucky the hitboxes in this game are terrible. <laughs> Was that even fair? I should that uh, shot should have missed. Sir, so this is not the last hurdle. Uh, this game is not over until the boss gets shot in the face. Yeah, the last hurdle is the boss. 
No, the boss is no, uh, no big deal, honestly. Never uh, played MGS3, not much left. Uh, about 10 minutes, not long. There's not even 10 minutes left. It's the boss. Well, I it. mean, I mean, we're gonna shoot this Kiratan though, because it stops them from walking forward. It just keeps so them we see that. Yeah, second we see that uh, those guys walk around the corner, they're gonna come back and check the Kiratan. Rip estimate. I can't actually see the stream. I'm watching via yeah, the I'm gonna be uh, actual game feed. Um, I'm probably gonna be able to estimate by like two minutes minimum. Well, Honestly. considering that like you got absolutely squabadouched by the end. Yeah, no, I'm not surprised I'm overestimate, but it's a matter of fact that I will be. So we'll scare those That's guys right. again. To keep him off our ass because I shot the caratan too late like an idiot. And we'll just leave. We're almost done. We just have to get over here. Then we can leave this horrible place. Uh, so once we get to this ledge, there's one more boss. We shoot boss in face. Game is over. Uh, this game is really short when it comes to applying speed tech. Yeah, but like, there is so many things that you can do in this game on a casual playthrough that this game can take you 20 hours. Also, did uh, Eva just run behind the tree? Eva, you silly little shit. So yeah, thanks Eva. Thanks for getting spotted at the end. MGS3 is a beast to speedrun and even worse in MGS3. Uh, so even on very easy, this game has some oh, hard like, like strats. The end fight on very easy terrifies me. Honestly. Oh, the new way of doing it? Yeah, yeah, now that we've changed it. Thanks, Flywood. Um, so, yeah, yeah I don't run European Extreme because I frankly value my mental health and well being. So, I just run very easy. Uh, yeah. I can run normal of this game and I can run normal of MGS2, but you'll see me do very easy most of the time because. Uh, very easy on like these runs and by the way if you want to pick up this game as a speed run and you don't want to do european extreme and you're and very easy looks appealing to you we have like people running that a lot now um yeah i mean if you're kind of if you're interested in learning mgs3 or any speed run um i mean we have a discord mgs we do you should join do. you can find it on uh, speedrun.com yeah, any of the game pages or just go to our website metalgearspeedrunners.com yeah we have a website we have a discord we have people literally every link you could ever want and desire is on metalgearspeedrunners.com yeah we have guides we have videos we got videos that have guides um we have <laughs> things explaining the minute things you probably didn't care about uh and uh, you can learn this game i did start writing a very easy guide on the website it's partially there but people yes you do use the easy gun in very easy in fact it's the only difficulty the easy gun is allowed oh, where's the after i was streaming easy gun gives you the ted dot easy gun gives you a laser sight um all right so eva's tired she's only just gonna get here eh <sighs> So I apologize again right. about the estimate, but I'll try and not mess up the boss too badly. It, it gives you a laser sight, yeah. All right, so the boss. The boss is, uh, she has been kicking our ass all through this game, but all of a sudden Snake knows how to fight a lot better. So we're gonna counter the CQC and mm. throw her to the side. Put two bullets into her head. Oh dear, oh dear. Let me just, I'm just gonna reset the fight quickly. Again, I apologize. I don't usually perform this terribly. <laughs> I just haven't been feeling great today, but. Also, this fight is incredibly difficult. Uh, it requires very p precise timing and positioning. So you saw he tried to quickly, quick reload the Mosin and the Gaunt, because the bolt action and... All right, so we're gonna counter, we're gonna pull out the Mosin and Gaunt. One in a head, double reload, two in a head, throw it to the floor. We're now gonna smack her with a stun grenade by throwing it straight up in the air and turning around. It's gonna land right in front of her and stun her. Put another two into her head after the iframes wear off. And we're gonna throw it to the ground again. And we're gonna pick up another stun grenade and we're gonna rinse and repeat this for a little bit. Eventually she's gonna get sick of our shit and uh... That's okay though. So after that, we're gonna throw her to the ground one more time. We can shoot her in the head. She, we can no longer loop her. The game will only allow us to do it three times. So we're gonna run away so she chases us. Counter the CQC, put two bullets in her head. Throw her to the floor. And that is the boss.
Uh, we're gonna shoot the Keraton for good luck. And, uh... Time, by the way. Yeah, that's time. There is a small amount of gameplay. Trust yeah, we pretty can... hard and we bothered you with questions. That's what I'm here for, though, dude. Like, I... Am, oh, like, no, you guys I... didn't cause me to mess up. It's just because I, li I feel awful today. Like, very unwell. Um... And I didn't feel great last night either, but again, I just didn't want to disappoint Matt, Matt, and you guys. Ah, 123 isn't bad, dude. I mean, like, despite the mistakes, I hope you all enjoyed the run, of course. Um, if you want to see better speedruns, <laughs> uh, follow my Twitch. It's right there, it's right, you MGS. Um, I usually, I wouldn't stream if I didn't feel well, so usually we won't see messes like this. Of course, if you want to see MGS3, MGS2, all of them. Okay, follow Iridescence as well. Iridescence MGS. Type in the chat so they can see your name. Um, go to MetalGearSpeedrunners.com. Join the Discord. Follow the Twitch channel because there's actually a Metal Gear Speedrunners Twitch channel. Um, I will also be at GDQ, so hopefully I'll see some of you guys there. And uh, I won't be at GDQ though. That's a long way. Yeah, it is. It's it's gonna be heck. But uh, I'm gonna let you guys move along once I shoot this guy. Once I shoot this. This woman. Uh, yeah, if there's. The run, I, I wanna see a lot of F's, by the way. So I asked her to poor boss, God bless. And. So. Uh, you guys can move swiftly. I guess we'll let the restreamer move on just because we're already behind. Yeah, go I, ahead. I I'll remember. be back in a few hours with MGS2 though, so don't go too far. And by a few hours, I mean I'll be back in seven hours with MGS2. 